tomorrow I'm getting my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I know, mine are great. My new lenses, I'm like, oh, I can see. You know, my eyes are just doing this weird thing. So, follow up, just um, talking through our next step. So, I put together, um, Rosanna, will you just go to the, the next one that you have open right there? I made a little cheat sheet, and we don't have to like do it now, but we can just start, you guys can start looking at it, seeing, so I try to just put if you're interested, we talked about this being something at the start of the year when parents come in for registration, it's a sheet okay. they fill out and get turned in, and then it can get turned into you, but so kind of giving a list of all the things they could be signing up for with a little synopsis. Okay. Um, and then just thank you for willing to volunteer. So as we continue to start finalizing that stuff, I mean, we have time, but mm -hmm. I started a draft for you. Okay, cool. Based on Verona's suggestion. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so. great. I, I love it. Can you scroll down just a little bit? I want to see the curriculum. Yep, okay. I just listed each of the things that yep. we have. Um, and I can give more detail and, you know, and then there's a, a follow-up. Uh, so, and like policy committee, I didn't say that we meet weekly because I feel like they can come when they can come. Like right. they don't, yeah. I don't want them to feel like they have to show up weekly and so. Yeah, and it just might be an interest yeah. in the policy that we're currently working right, on. Right, absolutely. You know? But I feel like if I can get them to say, oh, this would be interested, and then I can do a follow-up and call them and say, hey, yeah. tell me what you're, we are willing to take any and all, yeah. whatever you can yeah. give. Yeah, absolutely. So if that means monthly, if that means on a particular policy kind of a thing. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I had a great talk with the gal last night and sort of clarified my blurting out, but I just wanted to refresh Lisa's memory of the Hillsdale College mm -hmm. curriculum. Um, and then I had a great conversation with the gal afterwards and how she can present her idea to the board. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. like, yeah, we're always open to ideas, right. anything within the district, you right. know. Um, so that was good, yeah, I think it's great. So again, not anything we have to do right now, but I just wanted you to know that I kind of started working on the draft for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I guess I could have used so much. Did you still? Oh, you can still. Right in the middle of the camera. Well, okay, so I got, I don't, I, this is a green tea, because I can't. I, well, and it was warm, so I had to stir it up, so I, oh, the whole spit. Shut up, shut at me. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> okay, so um, stakeholder input. Um, I printed this for you so you have a copy of it. Um, we have four parents. Okay. So here's all the different policies. So I don't know if we want to just get through these policies, clean them up, and be done with them, or just continue to work through our list and get through those drafts so that I can get them sent out, and then we can do whatever you guys want. But um, I did want you to have access to the stakeholder input thus far on the annual policies that we looked at. I so appreciate all your work. Oh, this has been really good for me. Okay, so it looks like 1303 were just comments, not suggestions. Right, most of them are just comments. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you do have a paper copy if it's easier to look at okay. paper copy. Um, okay. Because there was only four. I did reach out to the parent that, uh, there was one parent that asked for a follow-up, so I emailed her. Okay. She hasn't responded, or I don't know if it's a he or she, but, um, okay. yeah, so, um, but she hasn't responded yet, so. Well, actually, on the 1600, there was a complaint, um, which, okay, pull that up. It says, I do not approve to the draft of this document, all references to chain of command, superintendent involvement, publicly held board meetings, respect to all staff members, and use of position on the board, of, on the board for gain was removed. 
These things need to be put back into the document to uphold the board member's accountability to the public and school district. So I guess we should look at that and see where they may align with the new layout. So if you look at our draft policy, um, so yeah, Roseanne, if you go there and then go to, if you scroll down to where it says board, the what's going to be at the June board meeting, we go to 1600. Um, so they didn't get this, remember, um, but here's all the language that is in the current one, remember we struck, um, struck through it. Mm -hmm. Now they didn't get that, but we did send them the current policy so they can see it, so that's where she's getting it from. Right. But it is all right here for you if we want to just go line by line. Well, I mean, with respect to what this person's saying, mm -hmm. an equity of attitude, I will be fair, just, and impartial in all my decisions and actions. I will accord others the respect I wish for myself. That, to me, seems like that's exactly what it's saying. That's how I feel, too. And then I will encourage expression of different opinions and listen with an open mind to others' ideas. Do we know who this parent is? This is the one that um, reached out to me, though, okay. and asked me to follow up, so I didn't know where I just haven't heard back yet. Okay. So. Um, yeah, because this... Maybe we need to have a conversation to clearly understand, um, because I think just like when we were, and you know, maybe I'm not he hearing correctly what's being said, but when we looked at this policy, there was so much protocol right. and not this is my dedication to you kind of thing. Well, remember it was super negative. It yeah, was right. the lens of negativity. Right. right. This this parent did give the phone number, so okay. I can I emailed her. Okay. I haven't called yet. I typically try to email first and then that way they can get back on their own time whenever it's convenient um, but or if you one of you what guys want to follow up um, yeah. then I can hold off if that's what you prefer but I'm assuming she wants to just give me some additional input of her comments yeah um, well since we started that chain I guess we can finish okay. that and then see where we're at because like the use of position on the board for gain mm -hmm. was removed, but that is our oath of office, right? Right, and that is in statute, and that is. Um, well, in twelve forty addresses all of that yeah. policy twelve forty, yeah. and remember the language in this one was just really there were some redundancies, but it was okay. also really negative. So, so I do think that you know. Hearing what you all are saying, I'm in absolute agreement that you know we'll just present it to the board. We'll let the board be made aware of this person's comment and have that discussion at that time. Yeah. Um, well, and and hopefully, I I talk to her in the next couple of days, and so I might be able to shed some more light and get yeah. some more. Um, yeah. Okay. Because what I think I'm hearing is that we're trying to obfuscate our responsibility in this comment. Um, I don't know. Uh, but maybe also we, even though this is a little bit different, maybe we reference at the bottom those policies that do cover these concerns. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, maybe that's something else that we can do. Do you feel like it would be, when you say um, reference policy, are you thinking policy 1240 or a different policy? Uh, well, we could do 12, what, which one is 1240? 1240 is the oath of office and all of your, um, actually, what's the exact title? Of yeah, the oath of office. Um, and then there is another one that says that um, for the superintendent, that the superintendent will be present so at 11, the meetings. So 1120P is oath, oath of office, and okay. then 1240 is duties of individual trustees, and that's where I feel like it outlines that. Yeah. So we could, I could add those to the reference. Yeah. So 1120, 1120P, and 1240. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, and I think maybe, I, just, I, I keep threatening the right article, but I just feel like there's this misunderstanding of the board superintendent relationship and who has what role. I had that discussion last night with some people, maybe. Well, 1240 is the duties that we're revamping right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's so right. limited as it is. Um, <clears throat> well, okay. This person, I mean, her final statement <clears throat> is, I think, 
her perception is is that what we've drafted mm -hmm. isn't going to uh, it doesn't according to this person's perspective uphold the board members accountability to the public and the school district well, we're only accountable to the public right yeah so there's the school there's districts accountable to to us us via the superintendent right. and policy but like well, I mean the board, not us. Yeah, right. but like when you look at number one, again, mm -hmm. to Ramona's point, a lot of these are outlined in the duties, and it's not about your code of ethics. It says attend all regularly scheduled board yeah. meetings. So right. that's, it's just misplaced. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think if I can assure her okay. that this is another policy um, that really outlines their duty, this is about their code of ethics as far as the lens in which they're making decisions. It's less about the actual task mm -hmm. right. than then maybe that will, you know, like I said, I don't know specifically what she wants to follow up on, which one, mm -hmm. um, but. Okay. Because, um, I mean, it's just like, so number 10 says be open, fair, and honest. Okay, well, the code of ethics, that makes sense, but we have, that's included. Um, but then it talks about, again, you know, recognize what's required in open meeting laws. That's not really a code of ethics. That's a task. That's a duty. Like you right. need to understand that. So. Redundant 
and implies parents and children that qualify for Title I are stupid? Oh, jeez. Okay. You know, we, okay, sorry. No. I, I was going to say, and you know, we do this with our customers sometimes when there's trying to get more clarification. We actually have them mark up the document they're talking about and send it to us. Mm -hmm. So if she feels yeah, free to, to do that. mark the document and specifically point out, I mean, we're more than happy to look at it. I keep saying her, I'm only assuming, I don't know. Um, have them. It does say Sharon, so it okay. could be your husband's email. Yeah. Um, I mean, it could be a family email kind of thing. Right, right. Um, yeah, to have Especially that. Especially specific to 2020 or 2420p. Yes, yes. Yeah. And 2420P is a new, is is just the procedure mm -hmm. for 2420, which we did not have prior to. Right. And typically, so this is ISPA directly. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. And typically, that just follows suit of the policy. Mm -hmm. You know. So I mean, the redundancy would be that yeah, there's going to be identical language because it is a procedural. But it's this outlines some of the type of requirements mm -hmm. from the school standpoint. So again, most of the procedures are to help the protocol. Mm -hmm. see maybe where somebody might read into some of that like number five on the protocol under administration where it's it says send information to parents of title one children in a format and to the extent practicable in a language parents can understand and I understand what they're saying is get rid of the jargon mm -hmm. right make sure that it's not full of acronyms that nobody knows what it's saying so should we be more explicit there? yeah so maybe well I would like this parents' feedback, but I, I do see how some of the wording can be interpreted. So um, um, if she emails me back, I'll just ask her if we can talk, and then mm -hmm. I'll just ask her if, do you mind either um, printing these off and just kind of putting, marking up the ones mm -hmm. that you're concerned about, or if you will, she's willing to come in and meet yeah. me and show me. Yeah. Okay. But... <clears throat> With respect to what Ramona just said, I think we should highlight this. Yeah. Number five. Yeah. Number five. Because even if she doesn't mm -hmm. communicate back, I do think that sentence merits rewording um, to where it doesn't seem like we're saying the parents are incapable of understanding it English. Feel condescending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It feels a little condescending. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. <coughs>
because there is reference to 20, in 2420 about um, uh, limited English proficiency. Mm. So, I mean, I don't know. It could be yeah. a Oh, I'm sure it's all, it's probably all of it because I, from a, a trustee's perspective, <coughs> all training, no matter if it's nationally or wherever, they always continually reiterate to not talk education ease. Mm -hmm. You know, so that people understand what you're well, talking about. You know, you, I mean, sometimes educators. I mean, people make up acronyms for everything. So sometimes we have to ask, like, what's this new? Right. <laughs> it, you know, it always seems like it's it's the same thing, but they've titled it differently. Whatever. So what what are you really saying? Yeah. So just say what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Um, on the same parent is. Um, Says the draft needs corrected under school fiscal year. Mm -hmm. It should still say district or school district. Using the word school implies that it is each building and not the district. Um, so I'm a little confused. Oh, she's talking about policy 2200. Is but she talking about the instructional hours part, which says the district shall provide. Well, no, it just says school fiscal year because it says instruction, mm -hmm. and the title is school year calendar instructional yeah. hours, and it says school fiscal year, and it says the fiscal year of the school is from July one to June thirtieth. So she's saying it either needs to say <coughs> she's recommending that it should say district or school district. Using the word school implies that it is each building and not the district, which I, I'm not really seeing the concern other than, I mean, each building would be on the same calendar, so I don't, I don't see. But however, if we did state, because um, we could say school district fiscal year, mm -hmm. and then the fiscal year of the school district is from July 1 through June 30th, yeah. I mean, uh, do you want me to add? Oh. Yeah. yeah, to provide some clarity. How about Ramona? Do you see? Oops. And on the same line, um, there was one person that um, questioned us not having Veterans Day listed. Okay. But it's because we're typically in school and that's not a day off and we honor it. I mean, we, we, every single school does a Veterans Day assembly, but the fact that it's not noted in here, because she said Veterans Day needs to be added to holidays and sold to veterans, you do not, should match recognize state holidays. Well, okay. We listed only the ones that we're out of school for. Right. right. How many are there in the statute? Uh, maybe we can just uh, delineate. Uh, Seventy-three one hundred eight is yeah. where we've got the mm -hmm. yeah those, and then there's the other. Um, so I don't want to know if we just want to know that we are required to do a Veterans Day assembly, and um, we just want to note that somewhere. Day, 
Veterans Day, Thanksgiving Day, Christmas. So Columbus and Veterans are two holidays that we are use, taking, I guess, as commemorative days. Um, so are there other commemorative days that the school's taking? Okay, so. And we did have this discussion, so she wants to go back and look at the video we did. Um, about Veterans Day and the difference yeah. between when we're actually out of school and in school. Right. And, and this um, was a different parent that just made that comment. Yeah. Is that true for Columbus Day? 
Yes, I read it, and it's in the statute. Oh, Lord. It's the second Monday in October, and November 11th is Veterans Day. So Veterans Day doesn't always fall on a school holiday. Okay, so we got to redraft that language. Right, so I know Veterans Day. But we always, on, we always do an assembly, regardless yeah. of what day it falls. Yeah. So we'll say these holidays may fall on a school day, mm -hmm. and... and students shall devote a portion of the day to the observance of the holiday. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm fine with all that. I'm just not sure that Columbus Day um, fits in with the um, observance. I know statutorily we have to do Veterans Day. There has to be an assembly and this, that, and the other thing. I mean, I guess we can... Do we observe Columbus Day in the schools? I mean... It's, it's not it's a big to do. They're like aware. Veterans Day. No, no. There's a lot yeah, of controversy over like We do, we do stuff about state. flags. I mean, it, that's right. all part of the history side of it, you know. I mean, they talk about Christopher Columbus, but it's, I mean, it's, this isn't a fair statement to say, you know, I read this as a portion of the day. For Columbus, it's like this much. For Veterans Day, it's, right. uh, it's, it's significant. Video. Okay, yeah. then we need to. It's definitely way more significant. Let me rework this. Yes. Let me rework <laughs> Columbus Day is like a recognition. Yeah. Today's Columbus Day. Yeah, and then kindergartners will draw a little picture or you know, right. they read a story right. or whatever. Yeah. You know, they might talk about pilgrim, pilgrims and Indians and how right. just be a, that's where they're going to get some nonfiction in and do a read aloud kind of a thing. You know what I don't understand is Christopher Columbus never made it to the shores of North America. So I do not know why we continue to propagate the story. Like everybody knows that. So, that's I think that's better. Okay. Um, so we're acknowledging Columbus Day is, is a commemorative day. It doesn't really mean much. Um, I mean, we're acknowledging it's on the, the legal holidays calendar. Yep. We consider it a commemorative day. Veterans Day is specific to the fact that we have to devote a portion of the day to that observance. Yep. And we should probably, um, I don't know that we actually cite that code at the bottom. So, um, well, that's the the, the the delineation of the days, but the actual. Um, we just got some really weird spacing. Weird. Celebration of the day um, is that in five part of the five twelve. The, just the enumerated holidays, but the, it goes into more detail specifically about um, better to say. Mm -hmm. Oh, specific to the requirements? Yeah. yeah. I'm looking for it in the statute.
school concert school grounds with suitable flag stuff to flag home and display, um, display their anthem flag of the United States. With weather, when the school is in session, and for each Veterans Day, each school in session shall conduct and observe an appropriate program for at least one class period of memory and honoring American veterans. Mm -hmm. 512A, is that what you Oh, no, uh, it's uh, 33512, and then uh, I. So, to determine school holidays, uh, any listing of school holidays shall include not less than the following. Um, other days listed here, um, if the same shall fall on a school day, shall be observed with appropriate ceremonies. Mm -hmm. That would mean Columbus Day needs to be observed by an appropriate... But Columbus Day isn't listed on there. Columbus Day is listed in 73108. It says, other days mm -hmm. listed in section 73108, Idaho Code. If the same shall fall on a school day, shall be observed with appropriate ceremonies. And any days the State Board of Education may designate following the proclamation by the governor shall be school holidays. So it's both. No. Oops. <laughs> Oops. However, what it doesn't state, well, okay, so we do observe Columbus Day yeah, minimally, but we don't do an appropriate ceremony. What constitutes an appropriate ceremony? I have no idea, because they don't tell you. Unless you specifically know what constitutes an appropriate ceremony. So, that being said, um, I would take that to mean that an appropriate ceremony could be something in the classroom. So any acknowledgement of, you know, maybe we're skirting the line here, but I, because I don't, I don't celebrate. I mean, you know what I mean? Like what? I think the focus should be more educational, right. like which is what it currently is, right? Right. So ceremony, in my mind, constitutes more of a, a production. Mm -hmm, but so I don't. I, I have to point that out to Mr. Norman. So it's uh, I-9, not I-10, correct? <clears throat> well, I-10 is the whole uh, Veterans Day piece. I-9 is specific to the listing of holidays. Oh. I-10 mm -hmm. is to erect and maintain on each schoolhouse and display them for the U.S. all days, except during incremental weather when the school shall... Okay, oh. And for Veterans each Day. Veterans Day, each school and session shall conduct and observe an appropriate program of at least one. Okay, so they, so really define they want a program. Mm -hmm. They don't want a ceremony, which right. our, we do do a program. So, okay, did you know that in nine, mm -hmm. okay, Columbus Day should be um, 
shall be observed with appropriate ceremonies. Oh, no. I call, I'm sure I read it, though. But well, it did not stick yeah. in my brain. No, it didn't. But I'm on high alert because I've had no sleep, so my brain's going wop. But in the sem, like, so it, de it delineates a Veterans Day and yeah. it actually gives you a length of time. So it says a program, which is what we do. We do a Veterans Day mm -hmm. program slash um, assembly. So what are we okay. going to say constitutes so a ceremony for on. Columbus? Well, we should have um, program definitions. You typically, at the end of each chapter or the section, title section, there's um, Let's see if they get that far. So Columbus Day and Veterans Day are recognized as commemorative days and designated in Idaho, uh, or as, wait, are commemorative, are recognized as commemorative days. I'm going to take the statute out there because that's my word. I need to stop um, doing good this morning. When, okay, so Columbus Day and Veterans Day are recognized as commemorative days. When Veterans Day, is, when Veterans Day falls on a school calendar day, all teachers and students shall conduct and observe an appropriate program of at least one class period remembering and honoring American veterans. because the statute doesn't state what a ceremony constitutes. They further delineate in 10 what they expect for right. Veterans Day. And um, I feel like if it was one and the same, they would just say that. Yeah. yeah. school holidays observed are, should we say Columbus Day and Veterans Day are, instead of recognized as commemorative days, observed as commemorative days? Okay. Yeah, I like that better. Yeah, and it does say that all those prior, and you guys might have already talked about this, um, so Independence, Memorial, New Year's, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. Christmas, other 
just listed, 73-108, blah, 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 shall be observed with appropriate ceremonies. All other days listed in 73108, if the same shall fall on a school day, right. shall be observed with appropriate ceremonies. Right. The only other two listed in 108 is Columbus Day and Veterans Day, because I went down the entire list. Right, but it's saying all of them have to have ceremonies, appropriate ceremonies. So I guess what the board needs to decide, we can bring recommendation because so that the staff understands, I mean, that the state did it, gives an interpretation of appropriate ceremony. I think you're misreading. You think? I do. Okay. Because, okay, to determine school holidays, period, any listing of school holidays shall include not less than the following. Mm -hmm. So, New Year's Day, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Thanksgiving Day, and Christmas Day. Those are school holidays, meaning we're not in session. Mm -hmm. Then it says, other days listed in section 73108 which is columbus day and veterans day if the same shall fall on a school day shall be observed with appropriate ceremonies so it's only those holidays that are falling on a school day that are not being observed as a school holiday so think about if you were a uh, um, year-round school and you were open i mean nobody would be open on christmas day this is a bad right. example but just say you were right and there's an expectation that you're doing some type of ceremony Right. Schools don't do that, but if for some reason you were present, then there is a requirement, a directive to do a ceremony. That's how I'm reading it. And then it says, and any days the State Board of Education may designate following the proclamation by the governor shall be school holidays. That's a little scary. Mm -hmm. so, COVID day. <laughs> Just, ha, ha. So. Please not. So, I mean, in reading it verbatim of what the words actually say, I don't want, I mean, do you still feel that the statute is stating? Yes. Really? Because okay. it says, other days listed in section 73-108, if the same shall fall on school days, shall be observed with appropriate ceremonies. All of those days besides Columbus Day and Veterans Day are on there, Martin Luther King Day is on there, uh, whatever that list was, it's 7308, I guess I can open it. It specifically tells us what to do with veterans, it, it calls out Veterans Day and Columbus Day. I have it up here one more. Okay. Um, Washington's birthday, you know, Memorial Day, Independence Day, which typically we're not in school anyways in July. Um, so I don't know. I mean, we can leave it the way it is, and I guess we can have that discussion. I just want to make sure I know going forward or from what we've had before, you know, there's always, uh, for instance, the CRT thing. Like, everybody's like, well, what is that definition? So I just want to make sure that we provide as much clarity as possible. And are you saying that the only days that have ceremony are Columbus and Veterans Day? That's what I'm okay. saying. Because, because we're what, in session for them. Right. Because to me, the way I'm interpreting it is they're referencing school holidays. And 73108 is specific to holidays enumerated. Right. Now, what it doesn't state is, you know, does a holiday mean you don't do anything? My interpretation of that, because federal holidays, when they are observed, everything is closed. So to me, these holidays defined by our state means you're closed, mm -hmm. okay? However, it does state that it picks out from that holiday section in 108, these specific school day, or these specific days on the calendar our holidays, meaning shut your doors, don't let anybody in the building. Mm -hmm. But then they're saying um, other days listed in 73108, which out of that whole laundry list, there's only two days, Columbus and Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. um, 
if those days fall on the school day, then they need to be uh, observed with appropriate ceremonies. So if you're not going to list them as a school holiday, meaning close your doors, not let anybody in the building, then, you have then you're going to do something about it. So in sharing that with Lynn, it was like, oh, for Columbus Day, <laughs> we should do a, oh, it's Columbus Day. Right, okay. But the reality is the statute does not define what a ceremony right. should consist of. Right. However, right. like when you fall down to 10, it's saying, right, this is what we want you to do on Veterans Day. Right. So yeah. I think they've left a little bit of subjectivity up to the schools to say, how much pomp and circumstance do you want to give to the Columbus Day? Right, yeah. And, and I am not in disagreement with the Columbus Day thing. I just, I'll have to think about it. Well, okay. The reality is, I mean, I'm fine with either way. I just don't want it. Um, uh. Well, I do believe, with the exception of the holidays that occur during the summer months, I think every teacher does some little, right. you know, bulletin board or hoo ha within right. their classroom right. to let everybody know mm -hmm. this is coming. That's what day. I was just gonna say. We really don't do anything with New Year's Day because right. it's more about Christmas Day, right? right. Like, it's, so it's all that's kind of combined. We do something with Memorial Day. Rarely do we do Independence Day because it's summer months. We right. always do something around Thanksgiving, and then there's always something around Christmas. Right. The only thing you wouldn't we wouldn't have is um, uh, beginning of the school September. Well, and like because we're not in session again. It's back yeah. to July. Well, things uh, July Fourth. Hol holidays that keep popping through my head are like Valentine's Day, yeah. St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. Those are commemorative days that aren't given by state or federal yeah. statute to say make a big to-do about it. Yeah. But most right. most teachers do, especially at the elementary level. Yeah. We really don't do Labor Day and we don't We do need to do Mardi Gras. I mean, <laughs> hello. <laughs> we don't do Labor That's Day, cultural. really, and we don't oh. do uh, New Year's do because New Year's and Christmas go hand in hand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's, and you know, not a lawyer, just a word, just a word uh, hound. The way I'm reading it is very specific to the holidays we are not observing as school holidays. I said we put Mardi Gras on here and then see what the feedback uh, is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that might shock you. <laughs> now I'm not going to get off of that. So. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, that's funny. So, um, I don't know if you want me to, if we can look back at the policy, because I did change a little bit of the verbiage. Okay, um, that's I, fine. I, Columbus and Veterans Day are observed as commemorative days. When Veterans Day falls on a school calendar day, all teachers and students shall conduct and observe an appropriate program of at least one class period remembering and honoring American veterans. Mm -hmm. I think that is actually more honoring that statement is more honoring to veterans mm -hmm. than to just be like. Well, and it really spotlights in statute. It spotlights. So right. I like yeah. the idea that we're doing the same. And then we do have fifty three twelve identified down here. Mm -hmm. um, do you want me to identify this? Do you think we should identify this statute next yep. to this? I okay. nine and ten. Yeah, either there or maybe at the bottom. But we did I, we do that with some other. I know we identified a uh, policy like that next to. Did we identify statute next to? The, the, I think we've been keeping all the statute at the bottom. Well, fifty three or thirty three five twelve is listed. But then you also want to list thirty three five twelve one a. Oh, it is listed. Yeah. Yeah. But the only thing that we've done below that is if there's been some federal mandate. Yeah. Like when we use the code of ethics, we listed that site, mm -hmm. but we separated it from policy. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Now there's another comment about on this policy, which policy is it talking to? Okay. Does this mean year around school? Year around school. The holidays act like the school year is through the summer months also. Well, sometimes we do have summer school. Right. So, Which is, we talked about that last yeah. time. Um, if high school teachers are working more hours, almost 200 more, 
Is there a reason that their lay is the same? I'm assuming they meant day. Yeah. Um, well, uh, what do they mean? I, I, I guess I don't know what this parent's I, meaning. I'm interpreting this specific to the instructional hours. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, if you look at kindergarten is 450 and then mm -hmm. everything else is essentially 900 or 990, that would be half. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the necessarily the 200 comes from, but well, I, oh. but that's the only thing I can think of. Well, the, the instructional hours states the district shall provide the minimum right. number of instructional hours. So if a teacher is working uh, 1190 hours, well, they, they're going above and beyond. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess I don't know. I, I don't know what their concern is because we're only identifying the minimum number of right. hours. And maybe of instructional that, hours, and maybe not. that's they didn't read it that way. They just it, because we don't provide 450 hours of kindergarten, we do well more than that for full day kinder. And but across Idaho, there is half day kinder still. So. Right. And kinder is not even required. Right. And even in that instance, even if it was half, it would still be 900 hours in total. Mm -hmm. for the well, these are instructional hours. These right. are not what their contracted hours right. are. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. And everybody has the same contracted yeah. hours. Right. And our school year is the same for everybody. Yeah. And this is statute specific to what the requirements are. Yeah, they're not looking Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> no, just do your diligence and enforce the policies and procedures in the ways. <laughs> I understand. Okay, so I think these are good, Six, are good so, to go to the board. So, Rosanna, we go to our, dra our um, consideration doc, and um, Rosanna and I came up with this idea. So, policies for June board meetings, we're listing them all here as we get them and you guys finalize them. Perfect. And then I'm actually linking in the direct policy, so we're super clear on which one gets uploaded to the board. Oh, good. Um, good. Because, in her defense, well, both of our defenses. There's a lot of stuff. There is a lot in there, uh -huh. and so I'm trying to delineate. This is the draft that we've currently been working on. Here's the stakeholder draft because that's the clean version. But even right. that can be different sometimes because then, like today, we've added stuff, so this policy looks different. Right. Um, but so that we're, and then we'll just keep our check and balance with each other prior to your guys's um, board agenda planning. We'll just yeah. go through and say these are the ones, and we'll do a recap and make sure you're good with them, and then Rosanna will pull. And I, I, you know, I have to accept that I didn't give proper instruction with like, this is what you have to do. And I was so burdened down that I didn't get to do my review as early as I usually do. So I mean, well, I have to this is accept a system some thing. We can put the system in there so it's cleaner. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what we just talked about doing so that it's all there and we'll just keep a running dock. And then the last policy before we're going in front of a board meeting, mm -hmm. we'll just double check that it's the right policies. It's here and we're good. Yeah. And so there's no human error. Like right. we just. There will so, always be human error. Well, <laughs> we do our best. We'll try to <laughs> minimize it. We'll right. minimize it. <laughs> so these ones we're good on. Yes. Okay. Okay. So can we go back up, Rosanna? Okay, so I've added in here, so this is the only suggestion I have. Again, this is not statute, but we did say that we wanted student dress in there, so I linked us in there, our doc. Do we want to actually add that to policy 1303? Because it's not one of the requirements, oh, but it is yes. going to be one of our requirements. Yep. Yes. All right, so you're comfortable if I add that in? Uh -huh. Okay. And then can you think of any others that we, I mean, we've talked about several, but several of them are listed. I mean, we wanted the harassment one, it's already in there. At the moment, I think we're fine. Okay. But I'm sure as we continue and progress, mm -hmm. we'll be adding, which will simply mean that we need to bring this policy back to the board and say we want to add this to this. Well, and then I think if we do that, um, I'm going to just keep this one running, and so then I think we add this um, to 1303. Like, well, if we add, if we say, oh, this is something we want, then we keep bringing 1303, and having at some point throughout the year we go, okay, let's look at everything we wanted added to 1303. Okay. So that we don't lose sight of that. Gotcha. I'll just keep a running draft of it. Perfect. Okay, so the next policy to tell
tackle on here. And so if you notice, I just put in progress Jews, we're getting mm -hmm. to them. Do we need to look at the student dress right now? The last time you guys did it was um, June of 2021. We trustee Bain wanted us sure. to, yeah. Can, yeah. can we pull up 3255? Uh, Thank you for linking them. It makes it much more easier for me. It'll be easier for all of us. I'm a systems person, so I'm always like, what do we do to make sure that we make it easier on all parties? You know, it's, I don't know why it's just bugging me, but, um, and maybe it's because of the parent feedback and the fact that when we looked at the one, the code of, uh, code of ethics for the trustees, the reality that, I mean, some of our policies are really, really, really like wordy and kind of preachy, which I don't mind that component, but. I kind of wonder what the intent of the policy is. Because to me, when you go to the statutes, which for a lame explanation, they're policies, um, they don't, they just say, here it is. Right. Why do we do this? Is it because we try to be warm and friendly while we say, you know, we're the big overseers and you will listen to us? Well, the other understand. piece is think about when we just had this conversation with the um, calendar. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not clear, so mm -hmm. like it's just a theory, and so what does it actually look like in application? Right, but see, like the school calendar. Let me pop back over to there. You don't have to go through that. I'm just. Um, um, the board shall annually establish the dates for opening and closing classes, teacher in services, and length of days and vacation and the days designated as school legal holidays. Mm -hmm. Okay, short, sweet, one sentence. Yeah. Over here. One of the fundamental purposes of school is to provide the foundation for the creation and development of a proper attitude towards education. And other, in order to further this purpose, it is essential to create and maintain, I mean, why are we doing this? Yeah. Students are reminded that their appearance, clothing, grooming significantly I affect the way others. maybe we are trying to make it warm and fuzzy, and maybe it's better that it's just straight <sighs> to the point. And yeah. Well, and there was, I mean, it did come from ISBA, but I do understand at some point in our history, we had the mental fortitude to read more than 280 characters. <laughs> this so, is true. This is true. Um, but yes, I, I agree with in today's pace. Because everybody's used to it. Yeah. Right. Text messaging. Right. The hard part about that is it's the same with text messages, the same with, you know, just email. Sometimes mm -hmm. you, you, if it's straight to the point, mm -hmm. you can't read intent in a positive way. You know, it. I, that's mm -hmm. why I think we try to word it and go, oh, but, but you're going to have parents that then feel it is preachy. Right? I know. And honestly, having a legal background, I'm used to straight to the point. Yeah. Don't fluff me up because I don't have time for it. Poor Bailey. She loves to talk her stories. And it's like, <sighs> and there have been many times she's like, I know, Mama, I'm using too many words. But I'm like, could you just tell me what you really want? I don't need the story. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to admit something. This is not very nice on my part, but I'm the exact same way. And I just want to, like, just give me the bottom line. Yeah. 
Like, I don't need to know the context. Yeah. I don't need to know, like, what day it happened. And then when people were like, was that Friday or Saturday? I'm like, it's immaterial to the story. Just tell the story. <laughs> so I yeah. have been known to my husband. I only get to my husband. I'm like, yeah, speak up, please. <laughs> and then he gets really upset with me when I'm like, he's like, I'm trying to engage you. <laughs> There's no engaging when you're just long-winded. <laughs> I was like, let me tell the parts that are deep, like, that are important to the story. Yeah. Not well, and it's so funny because she'll tell this whole, and her dad is the same way he has to try to I know, I know. <laughs> but she'll tell this whole story, but the question she's asking has nothing to do with the story. <laughs> like, I could have just asked the question. <laughs> I love the stories. I mean, and I do tell her that. You know, I do love the stories. I just need to prepare myself. Well, where we're going, the story's coming. Yeah, it's story time. It's not Q and A. I need to prepare myself for engagement. Yeah, and present. Yes. Which it's yeah. so now going into this new field where it's all about. So tell me how you feel. Tell, tell me your story. story. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it, it's 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 a different it's a different type of engagement. One hundred percent. But it's I and I can say that I'm kind of relaxing. Because I've been so removed from the soul. <laughs> but sometimes, like I would just say, you know, especially when we're trying to de escalate a parent, I mean, it mm -hmm. is just hearing the story it and is. letting them be heard. Yeah. And they will give you all of those details and just, you know, being able to shut it down in, in the sense of, like, I'm going to give you 100% of my attention right. and really hear you and all of the. It, this is all important to you. Right. Yeah. And, so. and I do, I should preface, when I am listening to someone complain right. about a problem, I'm all ears and I'm listening to every right. word they say. Because they've got to get whatever it is out and then you guys get, can work together to figure right. out w what's really the... the it's a real problem. problem. Yeah, right. yeah. But that being said, in some of our policies... These things get lost in translation because they are so wordy. Yeah. Because you can't sift through all of the data. Just to get 
feedback, I think. Um, from the admin and their understanding and knowledge uh -huh. of what that is, you know. And not to say that it hasn't happened at elementary. I think it's been fairly minor, <clears throat> but I know it's been at the junior high and high schools. One of my suggestions um, when you guys asked me to for the last policies before we started on the annual ones, mm -hmm. um, the parent feedback was about enforcing the attendance policy. So before I put a draft together, I actually went to both high schools and just met with them because it's really like elementary is elementary, you know. Right. But where there starts to be some real punitive pieces is when you're talking about taking credit away, you're talking about truancy and that kind of stuff. And so I just said to them, I put a draft together and just had them walk me through that whole thing, like what do you want, what's appropriate, what's actually happening, because I don't want to speak and then not be right. accurate. Right. So one of, in that, we, we all said at both high school, we said I feel like when that policy comes up, honestly, we should have representation from both yeah. high schools at one of these policy meetings, and just like let's talk through it so that you guys can really hear what some of the problems are. The dress code might be one of those we do the same with. Yeah, because I'm, I'm not, yeah, that would be be great. Because um, we sort of started down the dress code world um, based upon feedback that was delivered yeah. to the committee, but we, to my knowledge, there wasn't any physical representation mm -hmm. or dialogue of. Um, and they, both high schools were willing to be present. So again, this could be a board discussion and then at some point have the principals we invite them to a Friday to just say, can you talk us through this? What are really the problems? Yeah, um, because I don't know if Trustee Bain had anything in particular or she just wanted to make sure that we, the committee revisited it and brought it back. Or I remember correctly, I can't remember if I'm intermixing the different um, conversation, but I thought it she wanted to look at it so that it, we were doing our due diligence to make parents aware. Because I thought somebody made reference about before, before parents go shopping. Yeah. Yep, yeah, she did. So, yeah. um, I guess I don't understand why the board approved one still has. Uh, oh, maybe she. Wait. Is this the wrong one? No, well, it's not. The Janelle Vasquez one is the one that doesn't have the line items or whatnot in them, because I think, right, correcting them. Because I thought it would be more appropriate to work off of the board approved, because that's what's actually in. That's what I did. That's why yeah. I didn't draft that one. I don't have <clears throat> a draft in the 3255. I didn't, cha I didn't change this verbiage at all. No, I know, but oh. in, in file 3255, oh. mm -hmm. there's just uh, student dress board approved and mm -hmm. student dress. Mm -hmm. Okay, so working off the board approved is appropriate? That's what I think, because it's what's actually in, we have on the website right now. Okay. And I don't know if there was another draft when you guys did this. It's not in there now. Okay. I couldn't okay. find one that said draft. Well, yeah, and I know Chrissy didn't do things that way. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to double check again with that. So would you do me a favor then? Uh -huh. um, highlight this, or make it a draft yep. like we do, because we're gonna bring it back to the board. Yep. Do you want me to save this one and just make a copy, or is it okay if I make this one a draft? Which one would you prefer? I would rather you save it, okay. so that we can see both. Yeah, yeah okay. from when we approved it, because that's part of the struggle I have with Google, and the way we yeah. do some things is we lose sight of, well, yeah. what was it before? And, People like me just get to working on the document going, oh, I probably should have saved that. Yeah. <laughs> That's something new. Because I'm my own person. I do the same thing sometimes. Yeah. I mean, luckily you can go back and look at the revisions, but still. That's a lot of Okay, I just changed it, and it is now in there under 3255 in a trust draft. draft. Perfect. But okay. I'm going to pull up the actual what was linked in. I'm going to. <coughs> That's the other thing is I'm going back and just double checking that we actually
actually have the right one LinkedIn. And can I just offer an opinion? Yes, ma'am. So if you look at the policy, um, it doesn't happen very often, but like 3255, I'm just going to override for a second just so mm -hmm. you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and Rosanna, since you have a direct link, um, is it going to let me override you? Yeah. Um, but so look at here, all of them just list, and then for 3255, it says state address PDF. Yeah, that's yeah, not corrupted. That's yeah, corrupted. <clears throat> So, um, Rosanna, I think this is a couple of times, like the way we have them on here, it's not accurate. Mm -hmm. So can we just read, like, and I can help you, but just rename these mm -hmm. um, so that they're all the same, because it looks weird. We, a couple of times, that's it's just different. It's happened that way. Okay. Times. Are yeah, you guys okay with that? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, always. If you see like stuff like that, mm -hmm. when you're, please fix it. Oh, okay. Just fix it okay. because nothing irritates me more than when everything is like number, space, hyphen, right. space, and then you've got number, hyphen. It's like, yeah. huh, they should all look uniform. Right, and I, I don't have access to do it, but I can show you how to do it um, link-wise so that but it just looks funky to me <laughs> Yeah, when it's like that. This doesn't look as professional. So should we, I mean, should we do anything with this policy or should we wait until we have a round table with the junior high and high school principals and actually get their input? Or do you want to, to, to reduce well, some of the wording or? Yeah. Um, and you want public input at the same time? I don't know yet. 
I mean, I'd like to just have a conversation between, it would be my preference, just a conversation between the board and the people that deal with it on a daily basis okay. after we have that conversation. Then we can go send it out for yeah and say here's okay. the conversation we had here's what that looks like in a document form what's your input not that I don't want the conversation with them but in in moving forward I really want them to understand too that this isn't a punitive thing right. we're just having a conversation well and yeah. we're just trying to honor everyone's right, right. in this right recognizing that we're so polarized as a nation yeah. well the reality too is. Putting this on an agenda invites the public mm -hmm. to participate in the right. conversation. So I'm not going to dissuade or say I can't, um, but I think after the focus. after I'll, I'll work on that after no no the <laughs> focus of the <laughs> after we have um, the input from the staff and the I mean the principals or whoever is wanting to express the frustration and concern and things we do need to consider and contemplate. And if there is patron comment, mm -hmm. we'll accept it all, but then Absolutely. we're still gonna follow the protocol right. and send it out for parent input right. Right, to gather more. Okay, so clarifying yes. two things. I don't want you guys to feel like there's been any complaints about this. There hasn't been uh, from sure. the admin. I just know that that has come up quite a bit this year and in, in my opinion, Maybe we want to put something in there, but none of the admin has said that. They just, this has just been, it's come up probably four or five times. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think as we get a pulse of things, is there a way we can provide more clarity? You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but two, so I, we will bring this up um, so it will get added to the June board meeting. We'll have a discussion. I'll talk to admin. But this particular policy will not go out before for parent input until after the fact. Correct. After the board meeting. Okay. Yeah. And then, if we do get inundated with parent input after we send it out, we can rework the policy, bring it back before the board for which is what we knew. Yeah. So we would, uh, I know Trustee Bain's thingy is that if it's going to be revised, we needed to get it to parents sooner rather than later. And last year we did get it to parents, but it was during summer, it was June, and that wasn't good enough because Parents, because uh, first but we didn't send it out in the sky alert. Yeah, I don't know what we did, but right. I know that it was supposed to have been made aware. And so maybe if we do it in a sky alert and it's a, one of the pop up because it is a big deal. Right. Um, I, I don't know that we did a great job communicating it out. Okay. So if we like to Trustee Bain's concern in in the board meeting, we can talk about we're going to send this out now for parent input and then we'll come back if we have to make some revisions. It will likely get go to the July board meeting. Right. And then maybe we discuss how it's going to go out. Right. That would that would be fine. Because I think honestly the only thing parents are going from from last year's perspective of the complaints and concerns that I heard um, was grumbling about the delineation of the examples. Mm -hmm. oh. And that's exactly all they are, is examples. We're not saying, you know, this is this is a gist of what we're talking about. Right. We're not saying you can't go buy these clothes. We're just saying, if you buy them, think about how you're wearing them to school. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to wear a tube top under your t-shirt, who cares? But, you just can't wear a tube top. yeah, you just can't wear that t-shirt off and, and be all there. But, you know, we're giving examples, right? And it's it's so yeah. I that's why so many schools turn to uniforms, yeah, to get away from the distraction. And uh, maybe we need to consider that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, the other thing I was going to say back to your point with that specifically is, you know, maybe we do look at this policy through the lens of is it too wordy? Are we trying to inject too much to kind of help provide clarity, which is actually not yeah, providing yeah. clarity? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of like the communicating through seven different ways, and you're over communicating but not saying a word. Yeah, that's why we need to have that discussion face to face yes, with I agree. The, the admins of the buildings because the delineation came from what was told relayed to the committee that these were the things that were the problem. Yeah, and I don't know what those problems yeah. are. I mean, okay. elementary, they're so minimal because right. nobody wants their, right. their little person. Yeah. The they're all. 
because parents can still control what those little people wear. Right. <laughs> so they all come cute and sparkly and, right. you know. Right, right. you don't start to see the different, um, I'm gonna, what I walk out the door in is not what I actually wear in school because yeah. I have mm -hmm. a sweatshirt and I'm changing and my mom doesn't know. Right, right. So, um, yeah, let's uh, request, so. the policy committee is requesting that the admin come and have a conversation with the board over this policy before we dive into considerations for change because I don't think the policy needs to be changed okay but we haven't heard from them we don't know what their needs are the so, board doesn't know what their needs um, are next Friday is state for um, track so I, I would imagine let me see if they can come next Friday if there's anybody that could come speak to this I just don't know if all of next them or next, yeah, for um, to come. Do you want them to come to a policy meeting, or are you saying at the board meeting? The board okay. meeting. That's what I needed to clarify. Yeah, yeah. That's what I wrote, but then you said come in front of the board and talk to them like, do you want policy or not? So my follow up is they're going to come to a board meeting. I will talk to them at our admin agenda meeting on or I'll put them on the agenda for the 18th, and we'll just talk through. And I'm just going to update them and have them look at the policy, mm -hmm. see who wants to speak. And then after the fact, we'll send out parent input um, after the board meeting and then bring it back after that, after we've had at least a couple of weeks of a chance for parents to provide input. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the next one, we did not have a policy for this, so it's 3285, and it's the relationship of use and sexual assault prevention and response. Such a better sound than what I grew up with. Me too. <laughs> Every time I hear that sound, <laughs> Every time I hear that sound, I think of the movie Grease. Yeah. When at the beginning, is it the beginning oh. or the end where she's like, ding, 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 ding. Yeah. She's, oh, like, oh, no, no. she's like, stop. <laughs> yeah. And then they cry because <laughs> they're so attached.
We have policy 3085, right? Mm -hmm. okay. I just looked it up, the I see that. Um, 3085 was last approved by you guys February 25th, 21. The only thing I would want to make sure is that it appears, um, I would want to make sure the remediation efforts are the same. Um, these remediation efforts are the same as what's identified in 3085 because I can't remember how much we revised it because 3085 is the Title IX policy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's like 20 some odd pages yep. and that took... It's five. It, oh, is it? It, it? it was that long. Yeah. Oh, okay. It okay. was huge. Guys, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it took us weeks it to, yeah. to, to, to wade through yeah, it. Yeah, we had to so in 3085, it actually doesn't address, so when you're saying, what part are you talking about that you want the remediation, where it says such remediation during our following investigation, the 1 through 13? Oh, wait a minute, hold on. It's, it's, it's on me anyway. Um, any person wishing to, any person, okay, any person wishing to report an instance of sexual assault may do so in accordance to policy 3085. If the Title IX coordinator determines the instance of sexual assault does not fall within the scope of to address, it may be addressed through this policy. Okay, so the district shall immediately act to remediate. Okay, so this remediation is specific to this policy, not policy 3085. And the remediation and all of the responses um, as far as um, potential grievances or issues is in 3085P. 3085P is 19 pages. Okay. That's the one I think you're referencing. And right. If you guys approved that one, um, it was just uh, last year. April 8th of 21. Yeah. But what I'm what I'm saying is the ref reference back to policy or policy and procedure 3085 mm -hmm. is irrelevant to what we're delineating here because they're saying, you know, if it doesn't go here and fit in this hole, then this is what we're gonna do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's out of the scope of that policy. Yeah. States in this policy, the superintendent is hereby directed to develop administrative procedures to implement this policy. So if it's a new policy that we're implementing, then we need to have the superintendent develop administrative procedures to implement the policy. Um, that are not within the scope of sexual harassment as defined, defined there. So we need to make a note to find out if by chance there is administrative procedures for... I'll ask Brooke because she might have something that's developed out of the scope of Title IX. Okay. Um, if do not, then I'll have Lisa read this and then um, Lisa and Becky read it and then... Uh, well, the procedures shall include descriptions of prohibited mm -hmm. conduct, the definition of abuse pursuant to the Child Protective Act, Mm -hmm. Reporting and investigative procedures, prevention and response procedures, and provisions to ensure notice of this policy is provided to students. Mm -hmm. um, Do you think maybe this is just embedded in other policies? Um, I don't know. I mean, so what is ISBA did have an update in the fall of 2020 that uh, mentions 3285, 3290, 4120, and 4120F. It says these updates include language that will refer employees slash students to the new Title IX policy and procedure on sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. We recommend looking at all cases of sexual harassment through the lens of the Title IX policy. Yeah. If upon determination of the Title IX coordinator, it does not qualify the Title IX issue that event may be addressed through the applicable policies. 
the required updates. So, um, and then it does talk about 385 being revised um, to condense it significantly to make the structure more intuitive to follow. When was that? Update? This was fall of 2020. I asked okay. policy update. Which, you guys Which did. we did it in 2021, mm -hmm. so we probably were inclusive of that. Right. right. So do you, so I will follow up with Brooke because if we have an administrative procedure that's outside of the 3085, I'll ask her what that is. Otherwise, I think it would, they're going to follow through Title IX. So, my brain is tired. Um, the superintendent is hereby directed to develop administrative procedures to implement this policy in the cases of actions which violate this policy but are not within the scope of sexual harassment as defined in 3085P. Procedures shall include descriptions of code. Okay, um, the board shall review this policy annually. We don't have to add but that's all optional. how we're addressing the sexual assault outside the scope of this of the Title IX policy. It's optional. And it also says any person wishing to report an incident of sexual assault may do so in accordance with policy 385. Right. So So does 3285 have the procedure as well? No. Because the policy, as I'm reading it with my sleeping brain, is basically just saying you can report relationship abuse um, and sexual assault, even if it doesn't meet a Title IX violation. Right. That's all it's saying. Mm -hmm. But then when we go into the optional information to add, we're kind of letting them know, if you report it, this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then at the very bottom, following the investigation, will notify you of the outcome. I do think that needs to be communicated in this policy. Maybe not to the delineation that it is, I don't know, but we need to tell people, you can report it, and when you do, this is how it's gonna play out. So that people know, I mean, I don't want them to think they can report it and then never know what happens, and then feel like nobody's supporting what, what's occurred in their world. And the reality is, is any of this and all of this would get reported to Brooke. Right. Right. But if she determines that it doesn't meet the Title IX criteria, then what? She S would still handle it because it's a personnel and she's the HR. It's not necessarily personnel if it's a student be student, or if it's a student be teacher, right. or if it's a well, student be concession stand worker. It would be a student to student, any other, like volunteers, anything else would fall under. So the only situation where it wouldn't get 
reported to Rope would be a student to student ed, because anybody else has ever heard of you. But this is a student policy, it's right. 8285. So if it's student be student, then what? I mean, if if it goes, if it's a student be student and the parent goes, then would they go to the principal mm -hmm. which and then goes directly to the superintendent, which then comes to you. So Hopefully, <laughs> but we're not telling that to the right. parent at all, no, we're just, or to the student if the student's 18. I mean, I, I, I appreciate that the policy saying you can report it, mm -hmm. but we're not, unless we add some of that optional language or all of it, we're not telling them and when it's reported, this is how it's going right. to play out for you. Yep, no, I agree. Well, there is a procedure for 3285. For 30. Or 30, 30 for 3085. 3285. Lane has a procedure. There's also it. this Let's one see. here, 3290, and it does talk about if students have been sexually harassed or intimidated, what they should do. So did Cordelin just make up their own? Because ISBA doesn't have one. Oh, yeah, I don't know. It was, um, they, uh, they revised it. Last year, um, they uh, cited uh, Child Protective Act mm -hmm. and uh, IDAPA rule, um, and they have, and then they also cross-referenced 3085 and 3085P. Yeah. Um, but they have both. Um, and we currently have policy 3290, and then you get into 3295, which is the hazing, harassment, mm -hmm. bullying, all of that. So we have sexual harassment just in and of itself. Yeah, so they, and they do delay, it says such remediation during or following an investigation may include, and they do give the precursor, you know, if mm -hmm. Title IX determines that this follows right. the law. Um, okay, so then it looks like they took the optional language mm -hmm. and made that a procedure. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Which maybe we can do that. Yeah. yeah. Because, or maybe we should do that so that it, we're saying here's the procedures mm -hmm. that are going to play out if, you know, this is the procedure to support this yep. policy. And I always go to them when I when I question, if I have a question about legally what it should look like or legally what it says because they had attorneys sitting on the board, which was great for yes. a long time. So yes. I always say to trust, you know, what they've approved in that sense, you know, from the legal perspective. So, so do we want, do you want me to just replicate kind of what they have and then bring that draft back to you and we play around with it? Because you yeah. have 10 minutes before you have to. Leave. I think so. Yeah. Okay. And so I would title it the same as 3285, Relationship Abuse and Sexual Assault Prevention and Response Procedure. And then I would... I would just leave all the optional language addressing okay. sexual assault outside the scope of policy 3085 and 3085P. So crazy yeah. we even have to address all you know, and I think it is. I, I have this running list in my head in my head about we're an educational institution, but there's so many things that are not educationally yeah, based that suck up all our time. And I know that they're pertinent. Right. You know, but they have to be right. Yeah, it's like... We, well, to Dave's point the other night, when he brought up, like, when did schools, like, why do we even have to address the mental health? Right. Not that it's not important, but it's... Right. When did we get to a point where it's not just reading, writing, and math? Right, we've yeah. fallen that yeah. far. Yeah. Where it's, it's, you know, now it's, we're providing food, and we're providing back, you know? Yeah. So, it's just... And not that, you know, everyone thinks it's super important, but at the same time, it's... Yeah. There's so much more to than just the academics. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think that a portion of that always existed to a certain extent, but I do feel like in the more recent past that there was, um, it, it planned to um, utilize the school's in that manner, you know, to bring all those, you know, build this community that, you know, right. it's academic and, and nutrition and mental health and medical and, you know, and I think we, yeah, we should think about that too, like. Just so much. Yeah. Do we want to stop recording? Yes.
we can, okay. can take minutes early. Yeah. And I, I do have an update from 